The Georgia Bulldogs open their season with a bang, dominating the Oregon Ducks from start to finish. Pierce County alum Stetson Bennett was on fire, completing 25 of 31 of his passes for 368 yards, two touchdown passing, and one rushing TD as Georgia blasted Oregon 49-3. Offensively, we did execute at a high level, which have an experienced quarterback and you have experienced players, uh, you can do that. It was a battle of the Bulldogs between the hedges. The dogs made quick work of the Sanford Bulldogs. Bennett played well again that week, threw on for 300 yards, and he threw a touchdown pass as Georgia blasted Sanford 33-0. Kirby Smart's dog made the trip to Columbia, South Carolina for their SEC opener and made quick work of the Gamecocks, winning a final 48-7. In the Bulldogs' non-conference game against Kent State, they looked nothing like the nation's top-ranked team as they survived a sloppy performance, winning 39-22. Then it was on to Missouri to tackle the Tigers. The Dogs had to rally from behind late, but got the win 26-22. In the oldest rivalry in the Deep South, Georgia Georgia returned to its dominant ways, crushing Auburn 42-10. And the Bulldogs win over Van Divy offense posted nearly 600 total yards of offense. Stetson Bennett helped his Heisman campaign with 289 yards and two touchdowns. The Dogs improved to 7-0. So here's a look at Georgia's remaining schedule. Things won't get any easier for this team next week when they'll face the Tennessee Volunteers. The Vols, they have that high-tempo, high-powered offense, and it has been a force all season long. Then it's Mississippi State, Kentucky, and they'll close out with Georgia Tech. Time now to check out the Gators' path here to the River City. The Florida Gators opened the 2022 season under new head coach Billy Napier with an upset win over then seventh-ranked Utah. Anthony Richardson had a monster game. He passed for 168 yards, had 106 yards rushing and three touchdowns. A late interception sealed the win for the Gators. Then it was on to the Gators' SEC opener and then 20th-ranked Kentucky. The Gators led the game at 1.167, but the Cats scored 19 unanswered points to win 26-16. The Bulls of South Florida came to the Swamp facing a Florida team trying to figure things out on offense. A special teams blunder by the Bulls proved to be the difference in this one. Bulls went on to win 31-28. Rocky Top, Tennessee, home of the Volunteers. At the time, Anthony Richardson had not thrown a touchdown pass, but that changed. He tossed two in the game, but Vols quarterback Hendon Hooker had a terrific day. He threw for 349 yards, rushed for 112. He also had two passing TDs and one rushing TD as Tennessee beat Florida 38-33. Anthony Richardson threw a 75-yard bomb on Florida's first offensive play, and the Gators hammered Eastern Washington 52-17. The defense was awfully generous against the Missouri Tigers, but Billy Napier's squad held on to win at the Swamp 24-17. Anthony Richardson racked up close to 300 total yards against the Bengal Tigers of LSU, but LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels threw for 349 yards and three touchdowns as LSU beat Florida 45-35. So here's a quick look at the Gators' remaining schedule. Jimbo Fishers, Texas A&M Aggies, they're up next after they play the Dogs on Saturday. Then it's 25th-ranked South Carolina, Vandy, and they'll close out their season against the new Knowles of Florida State. One of the biggest headlines surrounding this year's Georgia-Florida game is the future of the game here in the River City. As you know, or you may not know, so I'll tell you, the contract is set to expire next year. I had a one-on-one -on -one exclusive conversation with Jacksonville Mayor Lenny Curry as he discussed the future of the game and how it impacts you. I was talking to several folks before we started this interview, yep. and everybody uh, was you know, talking about what this tradition means to them, what this game right. means to them, uh, what this game means in the city means to them. But there's also a reality that it could leave after their contract expires. Um, does that bother you? Does that keep you up at night? Uh, it doesn't. Um, we don't take it for granted. Jacksonville Mayor Lenny Curry is confident on striking a deal with Georgia and Florida based on the success he's had since he was elected mayor in 2015. The mayor says at the time the city's relationship with the universities was strained to say the least. So locking down a deal was so critical that he went to work with both schools top officials a day before he was sworn in. This has been here since 1933. Yep. Right? This is historic. Mm -hmm. um, it is part of the fabric of this community. 
It's over $30 million in economic impact, 90% hotel occupancy rates. It's a major driver of our economy. Translation, if Kirby Smart's desire to move the game on campus happens, the city's economy would suffer and it could result in jobs loss. I understand. Coach has a job, he has a job to do, right? And that is recruit talent and win football games. Um, but there's a whole lot of other stakeholders surrounding this rivalry and the history here. But the mayor also knows striking a deal this time around could be much more difficult considering how the college football landscape has changed. In the meantime, Mayor Curry has a plan of action in place now and for the city's future mayor. Well, the first thing we did in the last negotiation was made sure that this team, this game would be here for a year beyond me being here. When we get closer to June, we get through this football game, um, we're going to be talking to the ADs and talking about an extension, seeing where everybody is. Uh, the next mayor will be elected uh, in May if there's a runoff, and I'll work with whoever that is to make sure that uh, we keep this game here for another 90 years. Right, right, right. <laughs> Mayor Cor Mary Curry told me that the schools understand the tradition and the history of the game being here in Jacksonville. He also said that both schools definitely don't want to move the game. And then he added, right now, it's just uh, coming up, it's just between the city and the universities working out the found details. Today, four guys were inducted to the Georgia Florida Hall of Fame. Two Gators, two dogs, former Bulldogs, Champ Bailey and John Little, as well as former Gators Trey Burton and Andre Caldwell. Bailey is from Folkestone, Georgia. You know, he played up there. He's played up there. That's where he played his high school ball. Um, he says this game has a little extra meaning to him. After playing 15 years in the NFL, Bailey was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Check this out. He was recruited by Steve Spurrier to play for Florida, but he chose the dogs. Here's Bailey on what it means to be in the Georgia-Florida Hall of Fame. It means a lot, you know. You know, when I when I look back, I mean, there's so many guys that are worthy of this award, and to be recognized, I'm honored. You know, it's it means so much. You know, just it feels like a community thing because I I grew up close to here, so it's always gonna feel like something that my hometown is giving to me, and you know, I love to celebrate these type of awards with it. We felt a little mist today here out in RV City. The question is, how will the weather be tomorrow? The perfect person to ask is the most accurate chief meteorologist here in Jacksonville, Tim Deegan. The weather is apropos. It's a border battle. Cooler weather over Georgia, tropical warmth over Florida. That's why we had the clouds, and it looks like through the game, we'll continue with the clouds. The breezy conditions can't rule out a shower. In a robbery game, anything can happen. The Bulldogs are the favorites to win. Tonight, our dogs and Gators insiders are here with you to tell you what you need to know heading into tomorrow's showdown. You're watching Border War on ABC 25, live from RV City. Our AC is out. Duty calls, kids. Snyderman saves the day with affordable preventative care plans that keep systems operating all year long. Get your preferred customer plan at SnyderAC.com today. You're my hero, Snyderman. I'm Lieutenant Maurice Rain with the Georgia State Patrol. I'm Master Sergeant Dylan Bryan with the Florida Highway Patrol. While we may be rooting for different teams on the field, we're on the same team when it comes to keeping drunk drivers off the road. When you're watching the game, we'll be on the road. If you're drinking, do not get behind the wheel. Designate a sober driver, ride, share, cab. If not, we will be there to take you to jail. Remember, drive sober or we will pull you over. Our AC is out. Duty calls, kids. If your AC is running but not cooling, making loud noises, or your home's too humid, now you can schedule an appointment online at SnyderAC.com. You're my hero, Snyderman. And you're taking a live look at TIAA Bank Field, the site of tomorrow's showdown between the number one ranked Georgia Bulldogs and the Florida Gators. No better time than now to be in the River City. The game is scheduled to kick off tomorrow at 3.30, and we'll have complete highlights for you tomorrow night at 11. Back here live in RV City with two of the finest insiders in all of college football. To my right, and our Gators insider, Brent Beard. To my left, maybe you're right on the television, right in the bowl seat. Guys, thank you so much for joining me here tonight. Let's start with one of the biggest headlines, maybe the biggest story of the day. Uh, legendary Georgia head coach and longtime athletic director, Vince Dooley passing. 
Yeah, I mean, the guy that was the head coach for 25 years, 201 victories, six SEC titles, a guy who changed the complexion of this game completely. I mean, he never had a problem down here. So uh, it's a huge loss. I mean, he lived to be 90. He ran, he changed the athletic department at UGA. I mean, he goes from coach to being the AD. Just a very, very strong, uh, uh, very well-loved guy in the, in the community. Was still going to press conferences at age 89 and 90. So uh, it's a huge loss for the, the Georgia Bulldog community. And you got to think that uh, the, the dogs will be a little hyped up tomorrow to win one for uh, Coach Dooley. Brent Beard, give me one of your finest memories of Vince Dooley. I, I talked to uh, a, f a former college football player who was recruited by Dooley. And, and what he told me, Chris, what impressed him so much about Dooley was his integrity. He was tough and he was fair. And he set a really high standard for the players and himself. Uh, and even though it didn't work out, he really appreciated being recruited by Dooley and how you treated him. No doubt about it. Uh, he will be uh, remembered as one of the best gentlemen to be associated with the Georgia program. Meanwhile, we got a game to play tomorrow. Dogs and Gators at 3.30. What's the biggest headline from you going into tomorrow's game? The biggest headline is the fact that Georgia's relatively healthy. This is a team that's been beat up. and. But the thing is, you've got two of their best players who are actually out because of uh, injury. So you had Jalen Carter, who was on the defensive line. This is a top five draft pick, uh, an absolute monster. He's missed the last few games with an MCL injury. But I was able to report this morning that he's looking healthy. So there's a possibility that he can play. Now, I think it's going to be a situation where he's available, but do they hold him for Tennessee? You don't rush him back to, to win a game that you should be able to win when you're really going to need him against Tennessee. But at the same time, this is Georgia, Florida, so bring him in. But they also don't have A.D. Mitchell. They don't have a replacement fit for a guy. This is a guy who takes the top off of the offense, I mean, off the defense, and he's your offensive weapon. The offense runs completely differently when he's healthy and he's in there. So uh, getting Kendall Milton back in the, in the, as a tailback is big. But if they could get A.D. Mitchell back, then the offense completely changes and sets and Bennett can, you know, air it out. Without him, Georgia's going to have to run the ball, and they're going to have to get some turnovers because uh, Florida can keep it. Georgia has not faced a run game like this, so they need to be able to get on the field and maybe get a few turnovers on defense to get their offense on the field for Georgia to be successful. All right, biggest headline for the Gators heading into this one. So many people have talked about the Gator offense. I want to talk about the, the Gator defense. Florida is the second worst team in the country in third down percentage conversion, that allowing 52% of their opponents to convert on third down. Chris, that's got to change at some point. It's got to start tomorrow. All right, guys, uh, because of the Vince Dooley talk, uh, we had to go in a different direction off the top. What's the final score? Who wins tomorrow? Uh, give me Georgia's winning. They score four touchdowns and a field goal. Give them 31-17. All right, your score? 38-17, Georgia. Uh, and a lot of it will depend on the Gator turnovers, and particularly with Anthony Richardson. All right, Brent Beard, thank you. Ryan Abolsi, thank you. Uh, and uh, the game kicks off tomorrow at 3.30. We'll see what happens. Uh, both of our insiders selecting the dogs to win it tomorrow. We'll see. Trinity Christian's Treon Webb is one of the best prep football running backs in the country. Committed to play his ball for the Florida Gators. We're taking you to the heart of the game to find out what sold him on UF. You're watching Border War on ABC 25 live from RV City. What else can Medicare do? Can it offer you a Medicare Advantage plan with health solutions that help you save when the cost of living goes up? It can. Introducing No Compromise Medicare from Florida Blue. With plans that let you keep more money in your pocket and give you access to affordable dental services, plus vision and hearing benefits. Call today for one-on-one -on -one help finding the right Florida Blue Medicare plan for you. And learn about plans that offer the freedom to choose any doctor who accepts Medicare, as well as over-the-counter allowances for everyday health items and help around the house at no extra cost. Discover what else a Medicare plan from Florida Blue can do for you. Call 1-866-428-7424 today. Don't wait. Enrollment ends December 7th. 
TK Waters is the leader we need to take JSO in a new direction. With more than 30 years of experience, TK knows our community. He'll build back trust through transparency and communication and put more officers on the streets to improve response times and restore a service mentality to JSO. That's why our first responders and five Northeast Florida sheriffs are supporting him. TK Waters, for a new direction in Jackson. Hard work, striving for excellence, and a commitment to the communities we serve. These are the values that we practice every day at the law offices of Anajar and Levine. I'm Glenn Levine, a board certified civil trial attorney who has been recognized by the Florida Bar as an expert in the field of civil trial. If you are involved in a legal dispute and are not sure of your options, call us at 1-800-747-FREE for a consultation and take back control of your life. Here at Hanania Subaru of Orange Park, we have been inspired by our heroes at the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and we want to help light the night on November 10th. And in honor of the Subaru Love Promise, we will be donating $50 for every new vehicle sold to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society for the entire month of September and October. We know every minute matters, and you can make a difference. Come make this your act of light and see us until October 31st, and join us in the fight against cancer. And you're looking live here in RV City. Right now, it's a little quiet. This is the home, uh, this RV of the National Champion Georgia Bulldogs. Then we got some Gator fans here in the breezeway. You got dog fans here. Everybody so excited. The showdown going down tomorrow at 3.30. Uh, the number one ranked team in the nation, the Georgia Bulldogs, trying to remain undefeated while the Gators will be trying to get two games over 500. Welcome back to our Border War Special. I'm Chris Porter. As I said, the game is scheduled to kick off tomorrow at 3.30 between the Bulldogs and the Gators. And as you know, the First Coast is always home to some of the best prep football players in the country. Thus, both schools are always targeting those players. Tonight, James Grant takes you to the heart of the game with Trayon Webb, a guy who's committed to the University of Florida. The Trinity Christian Conquerors are 8-0 and eyeing their 10th state championship. And if Trayon Webb has anything to say about it, they'll be adding to their trophy case in December. Plays like this are what make Trinity Christian running back and Florida commit Trayon Webb a human highlight reel. But it hasn't always been easy for Webb on the football field. I dealt with an ankle injury throughout my whole sophomore year. Ninth grade, I broke my arm. Webb even got hurt before his junior season, forcing him to miss the Conqueror's first four games. He says these injuries have made him mentally and physically stronger. I felt like that's kind of helped me mature mentally. Uh, I just felt like I can do anything. So not, not mentally on the field, but also in life. You know, anything obstacle comes in life, I can just feel like I prepare for it. Webb, who was first recruited in seventh grade, initially committed to Georgia before decommitting and committing to Oklahoma. But after former OU head coach Lincoln Riley left for USC, Webb reopened his recruitment once again. Came down to Penn State, South Carolina, Florida. And I just feel like at the end of the day, Florida was the best place for me. The Gators weren't letting Webb fly under their radar. Coach Napier, the minute he came on the job, he came right to my school, came to see me. And ever since then, they got me on campus. I loved it. With his college decision behind him, Webb is focused on leading the Conquerors to their third straight state title. And this Saturday, you can bet he'll be cheering the Gators on against number one, Georgia. It's Florida, Georgia. You know, I kind of grew up, kind of grew up with it. So. Just playing the game, watching the game, experiencing that, it's gonna be a dream. I feel like I'm gonna have a goosebumps, you know, just, you know, I, I might throw up for the game, you know, <laughs> we'll see, but you know, I, for the Georgia, I mean, it's, it's, it's picks for itself. Trayon will be at the bank for the Georgia Florida game Saturday, and after this year, he'll no longer need a ticket to watch the Gators play as he'll be taking the field at the Swamp. At Trinity Christian, James Grant, First Coast Sports. It's your journey. Own every mile in the Hyundai Tucson. Get a Tucson with 750 bonus cash and zero payments for 90 days. Plus, up to $1,000 relief cash for those affected by Hurricane Ian. Here's your weekend sports on WJXX ABC 25. Watch the best sports right here. The weekend sports scene is sponsored by Farah and Farah. 
I'm Lieutenant Maurice Rain with the Georgia State Patrol. I'm Master Sergeant Dylan Bryan with the Florida Highway Patrol. While we may be rooted for different teams on the field, we're on the same team when it comes to keeping drunk drivers off the road. When you're watching the game, we'll be on the road. If you're drinking, do not get behind the wheel. Designate a sober driver, ride, share, or cab. If not, we will be there to take you to jail. Remember, drive sober or we will pull you over.